Good morning, Twitch. Good morning, Twitch. Good morning, Twitch. On this 02.12.2024. Current time is 0608 a.m. Eastern time here in upstate New York. That'd be the southern tier of upstate New York where I live and reside this Monday. Monday morning here on the 12th day of February. How is everyone doing? I, I gotta get some water. I forgot to get water in my water flask. Uh, how is everybody doing this Monday morning? I hope you had a good weekend. I hope you enjoyed the Super Bowl. It was quite the Super Bowl. Not what I thought, but then again, um, I look at the whole season uh, that transpired here in the NFL. It's not what I expected. It was some good football yesterday. Uh, we'll talk about that, but uh, I do have the morning coffee here, and it's tasting. I'm <laughs> half, I got half a cup. I might have to go get a an, an, uh, refill here early. But we have the morning coffee here. Oh, I got to change to. Oh, shoot. Oh, we have. Uh, we do have a problem. And that is the title in the Twitch. How come that didn't change? I thought I changed that. Let me go ahead and see if I can change this now. Let's see. Let's go to Docs information oh kept it oh, okay I changed the category I forgot to change the title though let's see if that changes it oh there we go okay we just changed it okay that's I love this twitch it's, it's, I'm, I'm on the OBS and I'm using a doc as far as stream information it works great so um, I know there's people that don't like OBS but I love it I, I, I I'm, I'm fully acclimated to it as far as that goes it's just like uh, um, people that play PUBG mobile on the little phones and tablets and stuff and they try and play uh, <laughs> uh, PUBG Battlegrounds on the, the PC it's a whole different two different worlds same game but two different uh, uh, impressions as far as it's almost real world on the PC and they can't get the, the you know the, the keyboard controls down and stuff like that you gotta get acclimated to it first and eventually you are, are successful so we're very successful using the OBS here How's the broadcast going? Let's see. What's her sound like? We got good sound? We have good sound. Testing, one, two, three, four. Okay, we have good sound as far as that goes. So we're, we're off and running. And uh, we're at 60 frames per second, uh, 34, 31 KBS at the... Uh, Twitch side at the OBS side we're at 3668 okay yeah, that's the way it's supposed to be so let's, let's get the get the volume back to park the volume there and uh, but we are um, getting our day started with a hashtag positive start to the day hashtag PSTTD folks and um, um, I thought we we're gonna have some snow this morning we're waking it up to um, a temperature of uh, 30 degrees Celsius 30 degrees Celsius which is uh, equates to negative one it's still winter okay we'll take that you know just uh, I thought we we're gonna have some snow um, I guess the pending snow is tomorrow there's there's weather down uh, our good friend Tony D my brother veteran my uh, fellow broadcaster and friend uh, uh, as far as that goes, uh, Tony's down. Tony D is down there in Georgia. Warner Robinson. They've got some weather. We'll be bringing that up here in a second. Uh, let me see what I got. I got that. Let's go with that. Um, let's see. Let's go my channel. We'll go with that. Okay, we're off and running. Okay. So 30 degrees Fahrenheit, negative one degree Celsius. And um, let's see, let me bring this up. Let me bring the weather up as far as that goes, what we're seeing currently. Oh, I don't have it up. I thought I had, I had a tab up, I thought. What the heck's going on here? Let's bring this up here. Weather, the weather, the old weather map here. And I'll add that back.
back right there and we'll go ahead and put the present and uh, there we go weather map share and push it let's see how that sets up okay there there's the weather map right there set over just a tad there we go so that's what we're looking for on the weather right there on, on the weather map and um, good morning Tony D Tony D is in the house salute to you sir hashtag positive start to today hashtag PSTTD and uh, and good morning to the missus good morning, Tony. here you go Tony <laughs> I just say you got some weather going on down there in Georgia um, uh, let me see if I can bring that up here. Um, and as you can see, New York, there is no... We were supposed to get some snow, but we don't. But when I back this out, as far as that goes to... Um, um, you can see there's weather down, down Tony D's way. He's got snowstorms down Georgia. Uh, going into South Carolina that's the pending weather that's going to be moving up our way and um, uh, as far as that goes and uh, you can see there's some weather out there in uh, the Washington State area they got some snowstorms out there in uh, this central uh, Kansas Missouri Oklahoma and Arkansas there but uh, this is the storm right here down Georgia way right now that uh, supposedly from what I'm seeing right now they had four inches they have zero inches now for tomorrow it does it looks like it's going to probably come up here and hit us 3 a.m. tomorrow morning early and that's going to probably be adjusted uh, like I said, they had this uh, we, just before coming on on the uh, the TV there. The, the missus watching the morning news. Um, uh, they said six inches, I think, or something like that, somewhere around there. So we still have some winter in us, as far as this goes. Uh, this next week, we're in the middle of the week or middle of the month uh, for the last uh, full month of winter um, because uh, when is uh, spring? Spring is. Daylight spring. The spring daylight savings time, beginning of spring. Spring ahead is on the tenth, so that's in. Uh, let's see, that's one, two, four weeks. Okay, so it's it is shorter. It is a shorter uh, time to winter. So, um, um, but you can see right there, that's our current weather as far as that goes. And if we get that in the moving formation. Uh, we can see that uh, how that is moving as far as that goes and uh, so that's our current weather here in uh, in the United States uh, our world times and temperatures in Honolulu Hawaii right now at uh, 1 16 a.m. clear sky 66 degrees Fahrenheit um, Phoenix Arizona at 4 16 a.m. currently clear skies 43 degrees Fahrenheit Chicago Illinois at 5 16 a.m. this morning clear skies 27 a cold 27 down in New York City the jungle cloudy skies 37 degrees at 6 16 a.m. and currently 6 16 uh, a.m. here in upstate New York southern tier of upstate New York across uh, let's see uh, Tony, you got the weather down there? <laughs> it's pro <laughs> and Tony just said hi and stuff like that. So he's he's at work, so he might be going into, into a meeting. But we I mean, you can see the, the the weather down Georgia way. That's uh, right there. There's Georgia. <laughs> you got cloudy skies right now. This this is Georgia right here, up there in um, South Carolina. Also across into Alabama, they've got some weather. And uh, it's rain. Okay, yeah, we're seeing the rain right there on the map, as you can see. <laughs> as far as that goes, the map right here. There, there, there. There's the rain that Joe, Tony is experiencing right now on the weather map. Um, so, and that's that looks like the movement is sort of north 
east and it doesn't look like it's really traveling up here so it's going to be interesting because then you, you look off to the west central you know what's what's this blue stuff going to do right here that's twirling around are they going to all meet up here and we're going to have a sort of a northeastern sort of yours usually northeasterns the weather comes up from georgia but then we got weather coming out of uh and there's a little bit over here that comes out of uh, minnesota wisconsin michigan area and they converge that's a northeastern so um, they look like they're just staying there so we'll see how this develops but right now from what I'm seeing um, on the weather it uh, it was up to four inches yesterday morning when I woke up and it just dropped down to like next to nothing okay across the pond in uh, Cork Ireland we have uh, at 1118 11, uh, sunny skies with cloudy skies 43 degrees Fahrenheit in Milan Italy it is raining and where it's 48 degrees Fahrenheit 1218 p.m. in um, Kuala Lumpur we finally got a sunny day in Kuala Lumpur uh, 718 p.m. in their early evening 88 degrees Fahrenheit in Tokyo Japan where it's 819 p.m. clear skies 46 degrees Fahrenheit and down in Australia Melbourne Australia 1019 p.m. Uh, clear skies 73 degrees Fahrenheit and in Sydney is 75 with degrees Fahrenheit clear skies 1019 in their early evening and that's our world times and temperatures as we speak and the only thing is it looks like the temperature will be dropping overnight going into Wednesday well this is Tuesday night oh this is no okay for tonight temperatures look like they're gonna stay above above freezing so I don't know how we're gonna get snow there when you go when you move into Wednesday that's gonna be a cold day that's gonna be a uh, high of 31 so it's gonna be a cold day we got 31 Wednesday 38 34 32 and then it's not till next Monday we get a 40 degrees and back in the 30s but we, we are on the uh, let's see does this going for no it doesn't okay so um, those are our world times and temperatures as I speak and we're gonna have cloudy skies early followed by partial clearing high of 44 degrees to uh, Fahrenheit today winds light and variable Sun will be rising this morning at 07 707 which is in 47 minutes 47 minutes the Sun will be rising here in the southern tier of upstate New York and um, as far as that goes and um, Sun will be setting at 5:34 p.m. Last week we're we're at five inches or something. Hey Jack, you come to join us? How you doing, buddy? Good morning. You gonna go lay down on your pillow? He's probably been up. Other cats chasing. So um, and we do have a weather advisory. Let's see what the weather advisory has to say. Weather advisory. Winter weather advisory in effect uh, from midnight tonight to 1 p.m. Eastern. I'm Tuesday tomorrow weather storm warning is oh the weather storm is canceled snow expected to total total uh, two to four inches it's not there anymore in Shimong Taug and Broome from midnight to 1 p.m. tomorrow it's okay so it's canceled I'm seeing the word canceled so this was what we we're looking at we're not looking at it anymore so um, that's good early spring the early spring is coming into effect here as far as that goes uh, we okay down in Warner Robins Georgia right now and uh, we get, it's raining we know that and uh, 61 degrees Fahrenheit and high is 69 and low of 54 so they got that's spring that's spring like temperatures right there as far as that goes so uh, um, you know it's just uh, But that's spring spring like temperatures um, we do have a thought for the day it comes from uh, Mark Twain and Mark Twain is a great literary artist uh, oh, what happened there I almost shut that down um, let's see if we click or if I do it this way I use the main main, main PC um, Mark Twain and I like Mark Twain is one of my favorite authors I like him he's his final resting spot is uh, about 20 minutes drive down west of here in Elmira New York 
That's his final resting spot. Uh, Mark Twain, a uh, great American writer and humorist, known for by uh, his, his real name, Samuel Langhorn Clemmings, known by his pen name of Mark Twain, was an American writer, humorist, essayist, entrepreneur, publisher, and lecturer. He was praised as the as the greatest humorist the United States has produced. We've got a couple other ones since then, I think. But uh, he, uh, Mr. Twain, or Mr. Uh, Clemens, uh, Mark Twain ranks right up there, um, and he was known as calling um, people called him the father of American literature, and I would have to agree with that. He is a great literary aspect. And here's his quote and our thought for the day: uh, Dance like no one is watching, sing like no one is listening, love like you never been hurt and live like it's heaven on earth. Plain and simple, enjoy life. Enjoy life is what he is saying. Um, I know that th this is a quote that's been said many times before. Easier said than done, but we can try. That's all we have to do. <laughs> that's all we can do is try um, as far as that goes. And uh, um, I always like doing the uh, quotes and thoughts, thought for the day, the quotes that are our thought for the day um, by Mark Twain as far as that goes. So uh, um, a great American literary um, giant here. Uh, let's see our uh, national day. Um, I think it, I think we got we got national plum pudding. I don't I don't like plum pudding. I can't say I've ever had it. Hey, what are you doing? Oh. Um, I gotta take a break here. I'll be right back. I'm gonna fill up my coffee, coffee, and uh, I will be right back. Um, stand by. Let's see what we got here. Okay.
and we're back. <laughs> Clean up on aisle eight. Had a little kitty, uh, a little kitty incident there. Had to clean up uh, a little bit of a mess here. That uh, everything's good now. Plus, I filled up my coffee cup. Okay, all right, we're off and running now. Um, oh, I think Jack was just a little ticked off at me or whatever. So, uh, um, as far as that goes, so uh, but we. Uh, Positive start to the day. <laughs> okay, for uh, our national day, national plum pudding. No, no, don't don't care for that one at all. I don't. I can, I can honestly say I've probably never tried plum pudding. I don't. I don't really care for plums. That's the one fruit I don't really. Um, though dates are made from. Is dates made? No, dates are something. I'm not sure. I, it, plums. Um, not really. I've, I plums are all right. I'd rather have a good peach. Peaches are better, I think. I, I enjoy a, a good peach. Uh, National Clean Out Your Computer Day. National Clean Out Your Computer Day. So what do you do? Clean out all the old files and stuff, I guess? Is that like National Clean Your Day? No, we're going to go with this one. National Football Hangover Day because today is a day after the Super Bowl, so everybody's probably hungover. I had one beer yesterday watching the game. Um... It's a, the games are so late. I don't really like drinking after dinner. I guess I, I had one beer to say, but um, I don't miss those hangovers. <laughs> I had my share of when I was younger. Um, but each year, uh, it's hashtag football hangover day. Each year on the, the day after the big game, National Football Hangover Day offers a bit of comfort and uh, uh, camaraderie. Um, every year since 1967, football. Fans across the country have participated in the must-watch football event here in America, the United States of America. This day is one where sports fans gather together to celebrate, place friendly wages, and indulge in food, drink, and um, some more uh, excessive than others on the drink there. It's estimated uh, nearly 14 million people call in to work on this day. They're calling to work sick the day after the big game. If this applies to you, congratulations. You're officially joined millions of other fans nursing a massive football hangover and headache. Um, and it's just a thing they do here in the United States as far as a football game. And it was a good football game, despite my, my, my pick to San Francisco 49ers. They lost. Kansas City Chiefs won. It was a good, went to overtime. So I think they said the second time it happened. So... Um, um, so today is hashtag National Football Hangover Day. Um, tomorrow we'll be doing the audio podcast. It's, it'll be the Tuesday audio podcast tomorrow. I haven't, I, I'm just starting to look at the queue right now. <coughs> Excuse me. On what I can talk about. I got plenty in the queue, that's for sure. Well, we do an update on the, uh, the Mars helicopter, which, uh, NASA has retired it with honors. It, it, it's gone. It, it lasted a lot longer than what they did. Let's see. Most Americans say the best part of the Super Bowl is not the actual game. Ooh, that could be a good one right there. See, oh, here we got New Moon Welcome. New Moon Welcome Saturn Jupiter for unparalleled stargazing this month. Oh, okay. Or New Month. No, it says New Moon. Okay. That means because it's darker, you can see it. There's, I'm not sure what planet is right overhead. It's either Venus or uh, Saturn. It's pretty bright. I think it might be Saturn. Let's see. There's a drone. We've got newly re released galaxies. So, simple, simple scanner the size of a coffee grinder will tell you exactly how long fruit and vegetables will last. Oh. New gizmo there. So, um, I don't know. It looks like, uh, we'll see tomorrow. I, I just got to look at that. But tomorrow is the audio podcast uh, over there on Spotify for Podcasters app. I enjoy doing that. Um, excuse me. Okay, there we go. Uh, let's see, for our history for this day, 
Um, let's see, what do we have here? The first ice rink here in North America opened in Madison Square Garden back in 1879. My neighbor across the street, he has a, out in the backyard, he has a, a, a skating rink for his kids. He's got a couple kids. The skating ring is, what's the dimensions of that? That'd be, it, it's almost a little bit bigger than this room, so it'd be like, what, uh, 10, 20, maybe 30 by, um, 30, 40 by 20. It's a good size, uh, this old back, he built, put some frames up, and I guess he put some plastic out there, filled up the water, and froze it. <laughs> it freeze, it froze over, so the kids can learn how to ice skate. Um, oh, February 11th. No, today's February 12th. Yeah, today's, did I say the 11th? No, I said the 12th at the beginning. I guess um, today is Abraham Lincoln's uh, birthday was declared a national holiday on this day in 1892. Of course, his, um, next week will be President's Day. So uh, Abraham Lincoln, uh, my favorite president, uh, would be the, he's the, if I could, this is one of those ifs. I don't like doing the ifs, but this is one if I like talking about. If I had one person to go back and visit and had a chance to talk to and sit down for coffee or have uh, a breakfast with or something like that, or a beer, that'd be interesting, having a beer with Abraham Lincoln. Um, I don't think, he might not, I don't think, I don't, he might He might have dabbled, who knows. Um, that one person would be Abraham Lincoln. Um um, this great country that I live in was near uh, being torn apart, brother fighting brother, and uh, um, Abraham Lincoln was the president, and um, he um, stumbled a little bit at first uh, as the beginning of the uh, uh, Civil War started, but it uh, um, he was able to hold the Union together, and we're a greater country because of that, as far as that goes. Um, um, and it goes to show that there was some major differences back then to, to tear this country apart. Uh, good morning, Tina. Raise my coffee pot. My coffee pot. My coffee cup to you. Our, our, our Jersey girl is here. Good morning. Glad to have you here. And she's saying good morning to Tony. I do hope you have a, had a good weekend. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the, the, the football last night. Uh, it was a pretty good game last night. Um, I think it goes down, that football game last night will probably go down as one of uh, um, the better games because they were definitely both teams are evenly matched and and, and such. Uh, it just, uh, um, it, it, it was exciting. We'll get to that here in a minute. Let's see. Abraham Lincoln's birthday was de uh, declared a national holiday on this day, 1892. A great American president. Um, let's see. The first stone of the Lincoln Memorial. On this day, uh, I actually said Kansas City by three. Oh, d did you? Okay, there you go. Good for you. And um, very good, Tina, Tony says. That is, that is very good. And we, we knew it was going to be a close one. It was so close that Tony didn't even want to give a, uh, a score that Michael keeps on. Michael Bathurst, the other panelist that's on Tony's broadcast yesterday. Belt Kings Fantasy Football. And, I, I, I'm, and Tony, I want to express that I greatly appreciate you having me up on the broadcast. We finished up. Tony's broadcast uh, his second season yesterday, um, as far as uh, yesterday morning. You can see it on the replay um, um, on my Twitch channel here uh, at Fireman Rich and also over on Tony D's channel. There we go, Tony D. As far as that goes, glad to check him out over there on the um, X slash Twitter. Tony D at Tony Tone 163 and uh, we had a good time yesterday on the broadcast um, and um, I think Michael predicted Kansas City also me and Tony went with San Francisco hey re return chatter T good morning good morning Co glad to have you here coming in from uh, that you're one of uh, um, Jim Figurity's uh, Leams Lima uh, uh, viewers there crossing over here I, he's on right now yeah he he's always on or he's up before me of course he's five hours ahead and uh good morning t glad to have you here thank you um so let's see lincoln memorial on this day uh which i've seen i've seen the lincoln memorial uh the first cornerstone was set in place in washington dc in 1914 
And um, that's right. Haven't said hello, Tim. Okay, no problem. You can bounce back and forth. Thank you for thank you for for being here too. I, I appreciate that and stuff like that. I like the pop ins. I like the people from uh, Jim Figure. They pop in. They say hello. Yeah, okay. And Tina, she'll be here, and she goes. So you know that that's what broadcasting. That's what I love about broadcasting. You can come in, say hello. I'm here. You know, whatever. You know, I'm hanging out and. Uh, um, you know, I'll be doing some other things after this podcast, probably <laughs> scoping out gyms there and stuff like that. Um, and uh, T saying uh, howdy doody to uh, Tina there and stuff like that. Howdy doody. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Alan Green topped the U.S. single charts uh, back in 1972 for the fir- for the only time with "Let's Stay Together," which was ranked by the Rolling Stones magazines as the 60th greatest songs of all time. Wow, uh, that's something. That is something. And uh, let's see on the AP side. Um. Yeah, Abraham, uh, 1809, Abraham Lincoln, uh, the 16th president of the United States, was born in a log cabin in uh, Hardin, which is now LaRue County, Kentucky. So today, happy birthday to the 16th president, Mr. President Abraham Lincoln, uh, a great American president and my hero, really. I, I, I would love to sit down with this. I love everything there is about Abraham Lincoln, the story of him. Um, you know, born in the log cabin, uh, you know, to become, and then eventually in his life, become the president and, uh, um, holding the United, uh, the, the country that was being torn apart by civil war. And, um, um, and again, it's one of the reasons this country is so strong. And, um, you see that we mentioned the, the cornerstone of the, uh, Lincoln Memorial, being uh, the first stone, cornerstone being set. I saw the Lincoln Memorial. It's it's a, uh, the one and only time I've been to uh, uh, Washington years back. It was one of the things I wanted to see. I only had a day, and uh, when we got there, I walked up in front, and I'm looking at this, and it just, you see pictures of it. It's like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. But when you're standing right there in front of him, and then you go up to him, and you're looking up at him, it's like, I mean, it just rushes over you, the greatness of this country. It's just like, it's a, it's a really sur- it was a very surreal moment there. Uh, the Thomas Jefferson Memorial, the two memorials that I did visit, and, they, and even more so at Arlington. Arlington was just off the charts as far as being surreal, the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. So Washington has some, some, very, some very good reminders of how great the United States of America is. Even though there's a lot of people that are they're shitting on it and uh, other countries are saying we're not strong. We are strong. Don't don't even test it. You know, you know, we may have some some uh, images of weakness as far as that goes, but this this country is greater and stronger than any one person or body of people and stuff like that. America is still great. It doesn't need making uh, great again. It always was and will be uh you're in the uk okay yeah our, our good friend from the uk um and it, it, it just um it's it just a i just love this country i served to, served in the united states uh, air force for 20 years tony served and that, that to me that that was an honor to do so and uh um it, it constantly reminds me each and every day when i wake up i will stand firm in front of anybody that wants to do harm to this country um, it, it just, uh, um, that's the feeling. And, uh, um, and I don't take that lightly as far as that goes. And I think other, other adversaries, I don't say enemies are adversaries, which are not really our friends, but they're not really our enemies. Um, God bless you. And yeah, thank you. No, thank the, the people and the, the, the people that serve in your serv in your, um, military services, uh, T, you know, the, um, the UK's, uh, military is a, a, a great, uh, ally. And uh, we're great friends, and it's surprising enough we were at each other's throats back in the uh, American Revolution, <laughs> every war in the War of 1812. We become great friends, uh, great allies, and I and and that's something that makes um, not only this country strong, but other countries in this world a lot safer. 
because uh, there's consequences of uh, uh, some of the what the bad people do and stuff like that and we see that uh, let's see 19 it was 1914 groundbreaking takes place in the Lincoln Memorial in Washington DC a year later uh, on the date uh, just don't mention the t yeah <laughs> there, there's more tr you know the thing is I think that that particular so-called tea party got blown out of proportion it's there's a lot more to that and stuff like that when you hear the rest of the story you know history has a, a way of gloss but I, I love the history channel on some of the the history that they portray that that uh, wasn't told in the history books and stuff like that and should because it gives you a better perspective um, as far as that goes um, this was a sad note back in 2000 Charles uh, M Schultz who um, uh, um, who created the Peanuts comic strip passed away in Santa Rosa, California at the age of 77. He was, his comic strip is carried on by his family. Um, and, uh, um, the Peanuts, uh, comic strip. Um, it's, um, and he also did id, uh, great cartoonist, great American cartoonist. Uh, let's see. Oh, there's the warning. Yeah, the warning's going on right now for the six inches, supposedly, we're going to get tomorrow. So there might be an adjustment today for the weather that as that system moves up and stuff like that. Um, and on this day back last year, 2023, and I don't even know, who was the, uh, <laughs> talking about football, a year ago today, Patrick Mahomes was the MVP as the Kansas City Chiefs beat the Philadelphia Eagles to win, the, win their third NFL championship uh, in four years, a Super Bowl uh, 57 in Glendale, Arizona. Well, yesterday they won their fourth, and they are uh, they're, they, they're up there on the hierarchy of uh, the most wins and stuff like that. I don't know, who was the... Um, I didn't stay up afterwards. The game was over. I went to bed. I was tired. Um, let's see. MVP of uh, Super Bowl. Was it Pitt? I don't know. For P Kansas City, I, it probably would be uh, um, Mahomes, maybe. Let's see. What's Yeah, Patrick Mahomes won Super Bowl for third time, so he repeats history. History repeats itself. Look at that. Right here on the the far, on the, the 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 morning coffee with Fireman Rich, yeah, Patrick Holmes uh, on ESPN. He, um, Holmes after Lee, and I I would say he played, he kept him in the game as far as that. He was a key for, uh, uh, for that. So, uh, but the, uh, his in history a year last year he won it too. So, congratulations, uh, Patrick Mahomes. And we're going into football, like I said, the um, San Francisco Giant or San Francisco, San Francisco 49ers lost to the Kansas City Chiefs. Um, score was um, 25 to 22. It, it, it went into overtime, and um, uh, as far as that goes, um, it was tied. Um, the one field goal kick, the one point, that one point that was. Uh, it, it, it all came down to one one point. The point after a touchdown, didn't the kicker couldn't kick it for San Francisco. Um, and there was turnovers. There was turnovers on both sides. So it could have gone either side. But uh, that could be a – that probably was a deciding factor, that missed field goal. Um, but they went into overtime, and San Francisco was able to, to get a field goal. But right after that, Kansas City got a touchdown to win it. And it was the first time they did the because last year when Kansas City beat uh, um, uh, they beat the the Buffalo Bills to go to the Super Bowl, that was a whack. All they had to went into overtime, and they got the ball, and all he had to do was get a touchdown. If you were the first ones, to, they watched down, got a touchdown. Josh Allen didn't even touch the ball, and they went to that wasn't fair. They should have had at least a chance to tie it up, if not come back. Um, they should go back to sudden death, back and forth. It should be left up. Oh, they got the first touchdown. Well, the team never got another time, so they changed the rules. This was the first time they utilized those rules, and oddly enough, 
Kansas City was to benefit. Uh, um, well, they didn't get a touchdown. They got a field goal. So they still, he had to get a touchdown in the old rules. Let's see, uh, Brock Purdy, uh, he did good. He had um, 23 for 38, 258. Uh, Mahomes had uh, 34 for 46 for 333 yards. Um, um, Mahomes ran for that much? Wow, nine carries for 60. Okay. Um, so it was um, it was evenly matched. Uh, they um, uh, I usually go to bed by eight or nine, but stayed up. For, yeah, I did too, Tina. Yeah, it was. Uh, the, can we remember when the Super Bowl used to start at one o'clock? It's all geared towards the uh, the networks now and stuff like that. I would love I would love to have it at one o'clock again. Put it back to the original time of football. You know, as far as that goes. Uh, and then the, the networks can go to their new shows and stuff like that. It's, it's too long of a night as far as that goes. So uh, um, I, I prefer, I, I, I remember when the Super Bowl would start at 1 o'clock. Even 3 o'clock would be better. But, you know, they they have to make, a I guess, a network production. Um, commercials were okay. There were some good ones. The best one I thought was the Tubi. With the the couch potato, I loved that. I laughed at that one. There were some good ones. Uh, there were some was like, are you serious? Like the T-Mobile one where they had all the stars. Come. It's like, give me a break, T-Mobile. So the commercials overall, they didn't knock my socks off. As well as the, um, um, I know there's some people. Um, I guess I'm not into his his type of his genre of music. And uh, Usher, okay, I could see he's a an entertainer and stuff like that. Um, they knocked me sock my socks off. Is saying no. He just, it was okay, it, uh, you know. Um, there's been some uh, some uh, some better, in my opinion. There have been yeah, ads, not spe spectacular for sure. They were okay though, Tina. There were some good ones. They didn't really knock my socks off though, but there were some good ones. I I thought the couch potato one was the funniest, as far as that goes. And there were some other humorous ones. So so they were about a a fifty fifty or maybe a sixty good. 40 that weren't that good the the halftime um i wasn't impressed I, as far as that goes it, it 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 seemed okay you know the singing and stuff like that and like uh um it, as far as that goes uh i almost want to say the one a few years it's years back with where eminem was uh in the mix with the musicians was was even was now, nah, nah, even that one was I, like, okay. You know, the great ones are like Prince. That's always been a great one. Michael Jackson, U2. Uh, I think The Boss, he played one. Even Lady Gaga's uh, uh, halftime show. I thought that was a, a better one than, than Usher. Like I said, I'm not an Usher fan. So, I, uh, you know, I, I could see where he's, a, um, he, he's established himself as a, uh, music artist and stuff like that um, I'm, and uh, I just don't listen to his music and it's the same thing with Taylor Swift who is in the stands there I'm not a Taylor Swift fan but she has every right to be there at the ball game and stuff like that you know but uh, there's people like her music and uh, as far as that goes and uh, so uh, but it wasn't it was okay it wasn't a it wasn't bad okay don't tell don't get me wrong it's it was an okay to good Super Bowl. It did not knock my socks off. It, it's just like, okay, yeah, 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 okay. It, it, it was entertaining to just to the degree to see the artist. Uh, I I think the 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 young lady that had the guitar. Ooh, that was. I always. I'm a Joe Bonamassa fan. So if somebody's up there uh, uh, with a guitar strum and, and they're getting down on the guitar, that that's that, that that was the one thing that impressed me. Was that that was pretty cool. Uh, as far as that that aspect, the rest of it was just a lot of dancing, and you know that dancing stuff is, you know. I don't know. What did you think of the Super Bowl uh, halftime, Tina? Did you like it? Was it okay? You didn't like it? it by far, it was okay. It's just like the the overall Super Bowl. It, it's gonna probably. I thought the Super Bowl uh, was good football. Very good, solid football on both sides. They had all aspects of football. Um, I like I said, I I, I would have liked to see uh, San Francisco win. I thought they were going to win. I had a gut feeling. I said that yesterday on Tony D's uh, broadcast, um, and they almost won. Almost don't, doesn't count. 
uh, I was folding clothes, didn't pay attention. Okay, so it didn't, it did, okay, it didn't, it didn't grab your interest then, um, as far as, and, and that's the thing. It was there, it's like, okay, it's music, it's just, uh, they build it up. I think that's the, one of the downfalls of these Super Bowls. They put, uh, you know, even though I guess uh, um, in some aspects, Usher did deliver. He is, you know, he is a good entertainer. And um, um, if I knew more about him, I'd say he's a great entertainer and stuff like that. Um, but compared to his past Super Bowls, um, I don't know. I just, uh, they say Prince. I, I, I like Michael Jackson's when he had his. Michael Jackson's and U2's so old. And uh, Prince was good. Prince is, uh, he was up there. And he was, I think he was strumming a, a mean guitar too during the prom. And I think that's back when the Super Bowl, because, yeah, I think that's back when the Super Bowls were at 1 o'clock or 3 o'clock. It wasn't a, a nighttime extravaganza, so to speak. Uh, I think they might have been at 3 o'clock or 4 o'clock. I don't know. Now they're at 6 o'clock. It's like, eh, you know, given where they were at, they were out in Las Vegas. So it's just, uh, you know, they start at 1 o'clock there. Two, three, four. So it's four, you know. So it's four o'clock. So, so if it's yeah, okay, I can see it's the three-hour difference out in Las Vegas and stuff. You can't start at one o'clock because it's if they start at one o'clock there, yeah, it's it's four o'clock here. So um, that would have been a better time. Instead, they they went for the three o'clock there or two thirty because it was six o'clock. No, six thirty here. So it was three thirty there. In Las Vegas with the time difference so um, but um, I thought it was okay it was it was a good Super Bowl Sunday not the extravaganza uh, you know good Super Bowl um, historical we'll see they're on the verge San Francisco or uh, I think San Francisco will be coming back again next year they played good uh, um, uh, Brock Purdy good quarterback good solid quarterback um, and Patrick Mahomes he's doing what Patrick Mahomes has done for quite a few years now and stuff like that and continues he's uh I think he's the new one that uh everybody's going to be watching like we used to watch uh, um uh, uh Brady Tom Brady as far as that goes so uh um be interested to see what happens with uh, Andy Reid as far as uh, that goes um of course uh uh, I'm going to take another break here, folks. I'm top off my coffee, and I will be right back. Oh, wrong one, wrong one.
And we're back. And we're back. <laughs> okay, that was our regular. That was our regular break here and stuff like that. Just checking in with the missus, and uh, I guess uh, I'm gonna be taking her. Well, we're going out to lunch. It doesn't. Be, it's one of those things. We're going out to lunch for to lunch today. Be a good day to go out to lunch today. Gotta be careful. This is full to the brim again. Mmm. Good coffee. Good coffee. Hey, we got the uh, thank you tea for the uh, for the uh, standby uh, graphics here. I like I like the penguins. They go back and forth. Uh, for the people watching on the replay on Rumble and YouTube, uh, we have an active chat here, and we have uh, T Gun, who uh, is from the UK. He's uh, one of um, um, Jim uh, Figgerty's uh, viewers, saying hello and hanging out with us for a little bit here. Uh, and uh, he's got the graph. They put these little uh, emojis, and I like the penguins. They go back and forth. <laughs> I think I first saw those when I was doing something about a penguin. Um, the penguin story there for the local zoo up there at the Ross Park Zoo. Um, now that the NFL football is over, what are we going to do? Well, we, well, we only have to wait a month and a half or so. March 30th, the regular season kickoff on March 30th, 2024, with a game between the, the USFL and XFL. Um, champions because they've merged now so the first fairy game is going to be the champions from the USFL and the XFL because those teams have merged into uh, the, the I guess the USFL is one division XFL might be another division I guess the Birmingham Stallions and the Arlington Renegades um, the league schedule was released February 5th which was last week last Monday and uh, um, so I'm looking forward to uh, uh, the USFL for some more football and then I think it's shortly after that in, in summertime that's when the Canadian football starts uh, as far as that goes. Uh, uh, season launch, the USFL starts uh, like I said March 30th 2024 combining the XFL and USFL teams. Uh, game structure, a 10 game season with a two week playoff leading to the championship um, the channels that will be broadcasting these games are Fox, ABC, and ESPN. And um, um, so that, that's going to be, uh, be interesting as far as uh, um, the markets revering their teams. Is, so um, that's going to be interesting to see. That it's, I don't think it's going to be the caliber of play um equal to but it's going to be some good football um of course i wouldn't want to line up against one of the u.s united football league uh linebackers <laughs> they're, they're still big guys so um but the league will be starting and um uh, that'll be interesting it's just uh of course we had the uh, usfl two seasons and then the xfl started last year and then they combined the two um, as far as that goes, so um, we'll keep an eye on that. Let's see this weekend. Did, didn't see any NBA action, but let's check in on the my favorite team, the Boston Celtics. What did the Celtics do this weekend? Let's see. On um, let's see. Friday they beat the Wizards, one thirty-three to one twenty-nine. Did uh, any of the New York teams play? No. Uh, Saturday. Um. The Knicks lost to the Pacers to Indiana. Oh, that's not good. Knicks are they're, they're, they're doing pretty good. And then yesterday, oh, the Celtics lost to the Heat. Did the Nets play? Let's see what the standings are. Standing, Celtics are still in first place, five games ahead of the Cavaliers. Oh, the Cavaliers moved ahead of the Bucks. Oh, wow. Knicks are dropped down to fourth. The Nets are still hanging out at 11th in the uh, Eastern Conference. And Western Conference, see the Lakers move up at all? Where are the Lakers at? Oh, Lakers moved up to ninth, so they're in the top ten. Timberwolves are first and uh, half a game. Ooh, there's three teams. you got Clippers, Thunder, and Nuggets are half a game out. And then the Suns are five games out. So, uh, of course, um, in a couple weeks, March Madness will start. I'll be uh, talking about that a little bit and stuff as far as that goes. And... Uh, um, um, as far as uh, let's see, 
the March Madness that happens in March. Uh, it is Monday. And one of the things uh, we do on a Monday is uh, we look at our, uh, our weekend uh, uh, penny saver. And I have it right here. This is the, the publication as far as that goes. Um, let me get this squared away here. Oh, why isn't it up? This is the penny saver. It's penny saver day. Um, let's see. It's Monday, so you know it's time for the penny saver. There it is, folks. And that's our screenshot at one hour and two minutes. One hour and two minutes and three seconds. Uh, let's see. Yeah, Tina, you like that? You like the penny saver? <laughs> We're going to go over this. If I can bring it up here, let's see. What happened? Oh, I got to push it to the bar. I got to push it. Okay, there we go. There we go. Let's look at the penny saver. And what you see on the online is not exactly what you see here because it's a different picture. You got people standing there. This one, there's people standing there, but it's it's two different pictures if you can see. But it's still, I don't know if it's the last one. But inside the penny saver, the main reason is to get the flyers to the three grocery stores that we have. Okay. Um, we have one from Price Shopper. That's where we primarily shop at. Is Price Shopper? I gotta make sure I don't lose that because then this is the uh, she's kind. And then we have the Grand Union, and then we have Tops. And Tops, um, our Tops we had here used to be. It had to change to a Grand Union. The Tops, the nearest Tops is across the border in Sierra. As far as that goes, so they got some good. So what do they have at? Uh, let's see. Of course, this month it's you know we got Valentine's Day, so they're going to have things about Valentine's, getting the flowers and all that. Um, let's see weekly specials. We have. Uh, did you see anything on the weekly specials? Three for ten dollars. A pound of strawberries, a pint of blueberries, or raspberries and blackberries. Ooh, that's not bad. Um, I don't know nothing about shopping. I have no idea. I just look at look at all that nice food and stuff like that. Are you laughing at that? Yeah, because the wife's like, yeah, look at the price. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it's just interesting to look at it, but um, you know, um, we're gonna be going out to uh, the. Um, the box store BJ's that we went to last week when we have dinner or lunch at the, the beer tree. We're going to go to BJ's first. Oh, we're going to go to BJ's first? Okay. Just a moment, folks. I don't think we're going to be overwhelmed like we were last time. Okay, we're just getting our schedules. But we're going to go. We're going to be definitely going out to lunch to uh, the Beer Tree, and then we're going to go to uh, BJ's where we went to last week. Because, uh, or was it a week ago or two weeks? Two weeks ago um, we went. And uh, it's a good day to be going up there and stuff like that. So we'll probably do a little shopping and stuff like that. So, because um, last week I did go grocery shopping with the missus. So uh, um, that was fun. Okay, and the Penny Saver. Um, let's see, nothing there. We got the Sweeney's Market. There's a, that's one of the local grocery stores here that uh, they have their advertisements there. They're a great little, they're not as big as the Price Shopper and stuff like that, but they got good, good things at that grocery store. Um, and again, I'm just highlighting the things that we have the readers column. We have what's happening. Let's see what's happening for today the 12th Newark Valley communication community connect lunch and then we have the 
Meditation Monday, 2 p.m. at the Van Etten Library here in Tioga County. And then tomorrow, we got a, a St. Paul's annual annual um, uh, was it pancake dinner at 5 p.m. I okay. Mardi Gras celebrations uh, at the community center in uh, Owego here. Enjoy a delicious meal and. So the Mardi Gras, yeah, we're going into Mardi Gras. The Tioga Pack Valentine's Day Moms Group at the Appalachian Library. So there's a whole list of things of what's going on around in the county. Uh, national viewpoints. Let's see. Let's can we can, can we find one that's not really uh, <laughs> that controversial? Um, let's see. We had a new water meter installed in our home in 2022 for the last four billing cycles the bill has increased our bill last bill for just the the two of us was three hundred and eighty three dollars is that high okay uh, prior to this new meter we never saw a bill over three hundred dollars in fact our yearly average was two hundred and thirty two this week the wa oh this is a Wego water department wow came out to our home and according to um well that's the same water company that takes care of us united water they must live in the village actually. yeah they live oh, does they still take care of the village i don't know yeah um they're calling it a wiggle water company so i don't know what they're talking about yeah maybe but this maybe they they thing. have to because uh um hey jace how you doing there sir producer jace uh um, I got some notifications you were on yesterday playing the games and stuff. That's one thing I haven't done. I haven't done the games that much. Wow, mine is two or three dollars three dollars we have solar. Oh, that's not electric. That's a water bill, Tina. I'm talking the water bill. This is they're talking about a water bill. This week the water a week of water department came out to our home and according to the so called new meter we have a leak. However, they cannot find anything wrong. No visual leak anywhere. Just 179 gallons of water leaking through my house a day. Please help. Okay. So it's the reader's column is a place to where you can. What's that? Gripe? Rant. Yeah. yeah, cry or something like that. We call it the criers. And Jace, uh, yes, I was. I was relaxing Sunday, Monday, or my day. Oh, okay. Good deal. Yeah, Jace, uh, Jace producer, or producer Jace here on Twitch. Uh, check him out. He's a great guy. Uh, I've known him for a number of years. We go back to the blab days and stuff like that. You know when I start, let me put this paper down for a second. When I go, when I go like this, remember this, Jay? <laughs> I always, I always throw those reminders in as far as that goes. Um, what else do we have on the penny saver here? Let's see. Uh, some more, more, more. Italian pop, Italian pop violinist Andrea de Cesare returns to Owego, um, who will be performing with Dr. Dana and the Jam Department on February 16th at the Originals Bar. Oh, the Originals Bar and uh, Lounge. That's where they the original pizzeria. They they make good pizza. Originals. Um, so that'll be interesting if you want to go out on the town here in a we go. Uh, petition notice of foreclosure. So we got something in here. They're foreclosing something. Um, alcohol prevention poster and social media contest. Oh, what to do? Make a poster, artwork, social media, video, or song relating to uh, underage drinking prevention. Use family, friends. So they're promoting, uh, they're promoting uh, 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 alcohol prevention is there. And then you have the foreclosures, Gail's Tales. You got a little kitty cat that they want to try and get, find a new, nice home for. And, oh, the Tioga Drama Club presents the Adams Family. Let me get this out. This is from uh, the Tioga Central School District. Yeah, Tioga uh, Drama Club. That's the Tioga School. It says Tioga Drama Club. Is this last week? 
But you, isn't that that's the one that's over at the school? Hmm. You, and oh, oh, our water department is Valoa, Valoa Water Oigo. They've gone through a couple entities. Um, ad break. I was in drama club. I did. I did their makeup. Oh, okay. Uh, doing the Gina. Oh, the Gina. That's the Gina. Okay. <laughs> and uh, Jace is saying hi to Tina. So we're just going through the penny saver here. Um, let's see. This is part two. Let's see. What else do we got? Got anything? It's not really. It's it's a hit and miss. It's a hit and miss as far as uh, to go through here, but you know, once once in a while, there's a real. We had a Shrek the musical uh, at the uh, OA Music Auditorium. Ice Bowl raises. Okay, this is the the Ice Bowl. That's what uh, this picture is. Is the Ice Bowl? The Ice Bowl raises over seven thousand to combat hunger. The fifth annual. The fifth annual Greater Binghamton Ice Bowl took place February 3rd at the Campville Commons, spearheaded by uh, tournament director Richard Powell and un under the direction of the nonprofit Greater Binghamton Disc Golf Club. Uh, they had a goal of 10000 This goal was nearly reached with $7,000 raised for Tauga County Rural Ministry Food Pantry. Uh, heading this list uh, of generous sponsors was Adam Weissman. He's a big time uh, business owner here in uh, the Tauga County of upset, uh, upstate state shredding. Thank you, Adam. He's always uh, contributing to the county. Um, in addition, both w Wagner and Double Augnet Lumber, they're two lumber companies, doted 500 each. This is this, of course, is no way shadows the numerous sponsors that made this total donation possible. Other sponsors, they just just going through the sponsors here and stuff like that. So, seven thousand dollars was raised to combat hunger. Um, and we got bridal guides. Well, it's getting close to spring, so there might be some people getting married and stuff. Uh, I don't know places. You know they got to they got to they got to make some money somewhere on this paper. So why not put all the where you can get married at a high cost? Uh, let's see the back page here. What the least I can believe and still be a Christian. Oh, well, that's interesting. I have to read that article and then pastor's thoughts. State of emergency renewed and extended on February fifth. The Tioga County Legislature Chair Martha. Solibright, um extended the state of emergency declared on November 8th regarding the uh, count, county's housing crisis and inability to provide for any arrivals, uh, arrival of uh, new arrivals of migrants and asylum seekers. There's no room at the inn. Most upstate, most upstate counties, um, upstate New York counties don't have the resources. So, um, uh, as far as that goes, so that that's been extended. The emergency order that coincide with the, the declaration was also extended last week for another five days, and will do so until the emergency declaration is rescinded in Tioga County, New York. The order is the result of the mayor of New York proposing a plan to relocate homeless uh, and uh, migrants utilizing cities, housing assistance vouchers to upstate locations. And we just don't have the facilities. They have the money because they're getting federal money, but it just, uh, all the, the small counties in upstate, uh, what are we gonna do, put them out in the barn? We don't have the massive hotels. And you, you, yeah, I, it's, it's an ongoing issue. 
an ongoing challenge. Uh, annual Tioga County 4-H tractor and machine operation training and certification program took place. And there, and on the back we have Spencer Markets and stuff like that. So there's our Monday Penny Saver in review. <laughs> I like doing that. Um, gives a little bit of hominess as far as that goes. Um, uh, let's see. So this is the article right here that uh, they um, they uh, ended up getting. Uh, this is out on the golf course. The people having a good time there. Some of the things they auctioned off. It looks like they had a good day. What's that? A fris frisbee toss. There's there we go. Frisbee toss. Oh, that's interesting. It's like horseshoes, but with frisbee. And there's the golf course. Um, as far as that goes. Tina, I feel everywhere there's no. I feel everywhere there's so many empty blogs. Uh, they should revamp them. Yeah. And let's see. T, starting, stating the obvious here, but just like the UK, I never understood why we have veterans homeless and starving and in the streets, but we will immediately give people houses every even if it's just uh, a hotel to stay in it break that's true T that's a very good point that's and there's a lot of people in this country that feel the same way okay it's no different okay what you're feeling is what has been expressed many times with the ongoing uh, issue with uh, concerning that because it's just like and um, uh, what they if you don't have the resources, the problem has to be taken care of as far as that goes. Uh, T, Tina says to T, me too, I was once home. Yeah. Um, and it, the, the going thing is I posted something up uh, this past weekend, uh, a sports uh, entity there, a high sports entity claiming, hey, we're doing all this. We're giving these vouchers to these people right out. We don't even know who they are to begin with. And like you said, we have homeless and we have uh, veterans that need homes and uh, we're dis disregarding them. We're not taking care of our own first. Not to say that we'd like to welcome them in because that's what this country is built on. But you have to do it properly, okay? I'm not going to go into detail and stuff like that because it's over above my head as far as that goes in some cases. So I, I totally agree with you, T. I totally do. It, it's a, it's a, um, um, you know, I do my, my share of, um, you know, we do our share of, of donating to uh, local charities and stuff like that. But uh, it's just like, this is an issue that um, for the longest time, it, oh, it's just down there in the southern border. We don't have to worry about it. People are saying, no, you better worry about it because it's in your backyard right now. You got people that um, they're knocking at your door and says, "Hey, can you have an extra room or something like that?" You, I don't want that. It's not. Uh, it's not right. So uh, there, there, there has to be a solution as far as that goes. Um, let's see. We stop sharing that. Let's stop sharing that. And we don't need that one. Oh, well, let's see. Let me see. What am I going to bring up here? What do we got for time here? What do we got for time? We got, oh, we're an hour and 20 minutes. We're still, Mrs. still has to take a shower and stuff, so we, we're good to go. Um, this weekend, you're talking about games. Jay was, uh, the reason, uh, I, I think I broadcast, no, it was Friday. I think Friday. I got to get some water. I haven't had any water yet this, this morning. Let me check my notes here. When did I broadcast, uh, Um, the eighth. Oh, that was Thursday. That was the last time. I don't broad. I'm trying to broadcast, but I get so busy doing things. Um, but this is something that's uh, <laughs> that's uh, taken my attention. Uh, with you know, uh, Jay's producer Jay's. He does uh, all these other games. He, they're really great games. And uh, Tony saying hi to producer Jace as far as that goes. And uh, Jay has come. He, he has a really nice channel. 
you can press a button and you can hear a fart or you can do something else. He has all the sound effects. And I love that. I see, I watched the replay, Jace, and uh, you got a great, a great, uh, um, a great uh, uh, broadcast channel there. On, uh, and uh, let's see. But uh, one of the things, um, let's see. Oh, that didn't come out. Oh, come on. Oh, I got to push it. Okay, there we go. And I could show you, this is my Twitter page, okay, as far as that goes. And uh, let's see if we, we'll line this up here. This is my Twitter page. And you can see from the picture, that's a picture of my character on a game I'm playing right now. It's called PUBG uh, Battlefields on the PC. I, I, this is, uh, um, I was number six. My goal is to get in the top ten. So this is one game yesterday uh, I was playing, uh, yesterday morning, and, uh, and I post these pictures while I'm playing. After I play, finish playing the game, um, oh, let's see, that. Then let me push that, push that. There we go. That's better. So this is at, at Fireman Rich, and this is exclusively on my Twitter page, at Fireman Rich. And let's see, Tina, I follow him, okay, but he's usually on when I'm in a meeting. <coughs> Excuse me, or, or study. Yeah, you can watch his replay then. Always watch, you know, that's why we have replays. That's one of the things, if you're broadcasting on Twitch and you're not, you don't have your replays activated, then you're not utilizing Twitch to its fullest because or else you're so focused on other things. I won't mention a particular broadcast. <coughs> Michael Batters. Yeah, he broadcasts on uh, on Twitch, but you don't see his replays. you got to go to his YouTube channel, which is okay, I guess. And, uh, yeah, it's a good idea. And, hey, Ozzy Joanna, good morning. How you doing? Glad to have you here. Saying hello to the chat. Uh, as far as that goes, and she's coming in from um, Queensland in Australia, and what is it, Two Wu Imba, Two Wu Imba in Queensland, Australia. Glad to have you here, girl. Uh, Joanne, we're just talking about um, this game that I'm I'm somewhat addicted to because I've been playing this more than any other game. It's called uh, uh, PUBG Battlegrounds, and um, I've been getting a lot in the top. You can see there's another game I did yesterday. I made it to number three out of 97. I started my own clan. I'm a clan of one, and I don't know what I'm going to do with this, but I could do it, so I, I just started. It's called The Package. So if you play PUBG Battlegrounds, you can uh, send me an, in, you know, just send me a direct message on Twitter. This, These pictures right here are only on X slash Twitter. I'm not going to go and post it across the board and stuff. I do post when I broadcast the replays of uh, my gameplay on the other uh, platforms. I'm okay, thank you. And uh, how are you? I am doing good, Ozzy. Start of a new week. Uh, we're, we're get we got past Super Bowl yesterday. We had our, our major uh, sporting event here in the United States, out in Las Vegas. Uh, Kansas City Chiefs won against the uh, San Francisco 49ers in a pretty decent football game, I would say. And then this weekend, like I said, I'm, I'm just going over. I, I played a lot of PUBG uh, Battlegrounds. There's one I was number 10. And I'm moving up. Uh, what's this one? Uh, this one is... Oh, that, that's my political. That's a political funny and stuff like that. And this one, um, I was 4th out of 10, 7th. So I'm doing pretty good. I'm getting in the top 10. Uh, there's another 6th place. And uh, there's one where I was 8th. Eighth place, so I mean, I'm I've been getting uh, I've been averaging. Oh, what is it? Um, what's my stats here? I write down my stats. I'm at level 37, knocking on level 38, and I've got like 12. I've got 51 matches I've done so far, and out of those, I've done uh, about 12, 12 to 13 uh, top tens. So that's about one fifth. That's not too bad. That's um, that's twenty percent of my gameplay is uh, in the top ten. It's very it's it's addicting though. 
it, it's just uh, I got the keyboard movements down and stuff like that. I'm fairly quick. I just get so I freeze when a person comes up and then I say, I'm supposed to shoot and then they they take me out. It's it's that quick. It's a very good game. And uh, there's our broadcast from Friday. And so that's. Uh, And T saying hi to Ozzy, Joanna. Thank you, T. And uh, Ozzy, or Joanna saying hi, greetings to uh, Tina, as far as that goes. So I've been doing a lot of that gameplay. Uh, let's see, what do we have here? New Yorkers uh, home to four, four of the best hometown people hometowns in America. Let's see what this one's about. Let me get this one. Let's see. Let's share this tab. Okay. Did it, okay. There we go. Here's an article. This, let's go over this one. New York State... Let's see. 12723. Let's go over this article. I love pizza. That that's that looks like the pizza I had the other night for uh National Pizza Day. It's Saturday night. Yeah, Saturday was National Pizza Day. Um let's see, let's bring this up. Doesn't that look good? Yum, pizza. Yeah, I like pizza. That's that's a that's New York style pizza right there, folks. Um, let's see. If I can bring the article up, where's the article? I'm trying to navigate through my uh, Surface Three here. I'm trying to bring up the channel here. My daughter made white pizza. Oh, okay, that's good. That's that's good stuff. Um. Here we go. Here's the article. We got a couple foodies. We didn't get any real food in the in the National Day, so we're gonna we're gonna have an article here, and that does look good. But um, four hometowns across New York State, including one place in Hudson Valley, make the best pizza in America, supposedly. Okay, and um, and there we go. There's a there's a slice of good pizza right there. Um, everyone has their favorite pizza joint. Pizzillo's just released, uh, or Pizzarillo just released a result of a study regarding the 250 best cities in America for pizza. We recently ran a study to uncover the best uh, which town and city across uh, America um, the best pizza can be ordered, uh, this Pizzillo states. And uh, um, New York State home to four of the best pizza places so there's some more pizza for you right there um, and let's see four hometowns in the Empire State uh, made it to the listing including the number one spot um, and here they are the number one is New York City you can't beat it you go to New York City you're gonna get the best pizza there is in the world other than going over to Italy itself my so New York City is number one um, uh, New York City pizza at the top of the list New York City probably sits with an average Google rating of 4.68 this might not come as a shock to many given the city's uh, story associated uh, with the beloved dish did we have pizza Saturday Friday. It was National Pizza Day. Oh, Friday was National Pizza Day. Okay. No. Um, the legacy of pizza in New York also cannot be ignored. It can't. It, it's the best. That's, that is great pizza. You're damn right. New York pizza, the best. Yes, Tony. Um, so the legend of pizza in New York also cannot be ignored. It's uh, home of America's first pizzeria, Lombardo's, Lombardi's, which fired up uh, its ovens back in 1905. This long-standing tradition means that New York doesn't just make pizza, it lives and breathes pizza. 
I can remember having, I could still remember having that first slice in New York. My father, I think I was like seven or eight, we're down there visiting my grandparents in Brooklyn, and we're walking Manhattan, and we stop, and I'm looking, my dad's getting something out of the window, and then he hands me this big slice of pizza, cheese pizza, a big slice, just like that, but it was huge. Oh my God, was that good. We have that here, and we had it Friday at Mario's, New York style pizza. Like Tony says, New York pizza, the best. New Jersey has a sec. Has a sec. They're all good, Tino, okay? It's just, um, this is evident in the generations of family-owned pizzerias, and uh, and that's what it is. The pizzeria I go to here in upstate New York is family-owned. Those are the best, the family-owned ones. Um, let's see. Number two is Schenectady, New York. Uh, my sister-in-law lives up there in Schenectady. Schenectady, no other hometown in New York State, made the top uh, 50. The next best home in hometown New York is Schenectady, which placed 53rd. Um, this is at uh, Percelli's Bakery. It's probably the most famous pizzeria in Schenectady. It recently ranked 70th in 100, 101 pizza places. <clears throat> Oh, and Jack Nicholson loves that place. I guess he's been there. He loves the place. Nicholson loves the, the bread uh, from Pacharo's Bakery. He reported has it shipped to California in his home. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, <clears throat> the Oscar winner uh, actor got hooked on the Schenectady Bakery around 1987 when filming uh, Ironweed in the Capital Region. Friends of Jack still stop in the bakery. Okay, another one is 115 bar, 151 bar and restaurant. Um, and, and Tony's laughing at Tina there, that being second in pizzeria. The next one, the number third one is uh, another one in Schenectady. A pizzeria in Schenectady got some pretty terrible reviews from Pizza Expert. Um, so what's the thing? Okay. I don't understand this one. Is that one of the pizzerias or what? The next one is up there in Syracuse. Going back to the list, no other pizzeria placed in the top 100. No other pizzeria placed in it. Syracuse placed 142. So these are just in New York State. So we have uh, we have New York City. We have uh, Schenectady. Now we have Syracuse. Syracuse that has the best pizzeria in New York State. These are the four best in New York, okay? Um, but on the overall list, it placed 142nd and with a Google score of 4.45. The, the fourth one is Yonkers, New York. One place from the Hudson Valley made the list. Yonkers is the best hometown local pizzeria in uh, New York State. Yonkers, New York. Pizzeria Napoleons, Frank Pepe's, the best place for pizza in Yonkers might be Frank's Pepe P Pizzeria Napoleano. Um, Frank's Pepe's has a few locations and always ranks best. So that, there we have it. Frank Pepe's uh, White Clam Pizza was named the fourth best pizza in America by the Food Network. At the Yonkers location, you can purchase a small white clam pie for fourteen dollars and seventy-five cents, that's not a bad price for, a, a, and that's for a large and a medium. Um, and, oh, that's for a long. That's for, a, and a medium, will cost you twenty-three. I don't, that doesn't make sense. Twenty-three dollars. Oh, a small is fourteen. A medium is twenty-three, and the large is thirty. So that that's that's about the a large, a large cheese pizza is about twenty, twenty between twenty-five and thirty. Uh, Tina says, I swore I was staying on a diet today. I want pizza now. I'm sorry, Tina. <laughs> P Tina wants pizza now. I want pizza talking about it. I love talking about this stuff. Um, and uh, we have a picture of uh, Prezello's, uh, the fourth one. Let's see. Let's get to it here. Where is it? Right. There's Jack at his favorite pizza place. 
There's Pozzello's right there. That's in Yonkers. Frank Pepe Pizzeria, established in 1925. Um, Pozzello's wasn't officially established until 2016 when he we, we decided to take our 20 years of experience building restaurant great pizza ovens for the for the most demanding pizza connoisseurs in the backyard of all pizza lovers. Uh, the best pizza doesn't have to come from a fancy pizzeria, uh, John said. Join us in discovering uh, the word of artistic pizza. Um, so, uh, like I said, Schenectady, that's a good place. My favorite place by far is uh, uh, is the um, Mario's Mario's Pizzeria. Matter of fact, let me. What's that? What you doing? Making a lot of noise. Oh, we gotta chuck that. Yep. Oh, we are. Oh, okay. Can't yeah, something. Let's add it. Yeah, I think we got our. Let's see, Tony. I grew up uh, on the pizza from Jamaica Ave in Queens. I fight people. Yeah, I know what you're saying. Uh, I don't. Let me see. I'm going to bring this up. Pizza. See that we're talking about it. And uh, Tina's laughing at that. I want to show you Mario's. It's 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 a nice restaurant. Let's see. Um, let's go right here. Mario's. Oh. No, I want to hear. Okay. Wrong keyboard. I always talk about Mario's and I love the place. The place is very good. Um, no, I don't want that. Let's see. Let's go with this. I'm going to Google's Maps. There's Mario's right there. There's that's the best place to get pizza here in the southern tier of upstate New York. As far as that goes, okay? It's a great place. I love it. The missus loves it and the family loves it. Um <clears throat> let me try this again. There's, there's a menu. There's the menu. They're online. Great pizza. Pizza and wings and more. Italian food in Owego, New York. I just want to show you the menu. Doesn't that look good? I'm making Tina hungry. <laughs> Margarita pizza on Jamaica Plains. Oh, God, yeah. I, there's a good pizza. That's a... Uh, So uh, Mario's is a great place as far as that goes, and I love it. It's it's nothing fancy. Um, 
the inside of the um, let's see if I have a here's the inside of the restaurant and see it's right there on the corner some of the foods they make great subs it's a great place <laughs> Tina saying stop <laughs> oh there we go Tina look at that <laughs> okay I gotta stop I gotta stop it's like like oh that was good but um, no a great place a great place I like promoting it and uh, yeah oh my <laughs> exactly Tina we got an ad break ends in a minute and stuff like that so uh, I just uh, we hit, like Friday like the missus said was National Pizza uh, day and uh, we uh, we ended up that's where we get pizza from I love I'm not a <laughs> Tony's laughing if anyone's to come to visit to me, I'm taking you to Mario's. You know, they got uh, good pizzerias. They have Speedies. I know a lot of people don't realize what Speedies. Speedies is skewed meat in Speedy sauce, and it makes a great sub sandwich. Um, and um, it's it just a great quality of food from there. And I'm a, a, a big advocate consumer. I have no relations or ties with Mario's, the pizzeria and stuff like that. It's just I'm a, a patron, a customer, and I love the place. And... Um, um, we continue to patronize it uh, as far as that goes um, let's see we're gonna go ahead and uh, let's see I got uh, we got Fridays uh, hundred years ago in uh, in the history let's go ahead and bring that up let's see go to present Hundred years ago, push it, and uh, resize it. Okay, and we're gonna we're gonna see what happened in um, in history a hundred years ago uh, on uh, Friday, which was National Pizza Day. Okay, um, as far as that goes. So let's listen to this. Uh, where did I put it? Oh, there it is. Okay, here we go. A hundred years ago today, it was announced that the new school being proposed for the Seventh Ward will be built on Holly Street between Fayette and Stuyvesant Streets. The superintendent of the Susquehanna Valley Home reports that there are currently 164 children being cared for in the home. Clara Kimball Young, known to millions of Americans as a leading star of the screen, is in town. She will make her first appearance on the legitimate stage tonight at the Stone Opera House. A heavy team of horses pulling a lumber wagon this morning became frightened, broke loose, and ran away on Front Street, dragging the driver behind them. And finally, a Johnson City man who recently robbed $100 from his employer and then disappeared has been captured and is now on his way back. He was discovered after listing his former employer as a reference on a job application. That was the news 100 years ago. What a dumbass. <laughs> That's all I got to say. I'm going to laugh. <laughs> Uh, putting your uh, previous employer and then you, you stole a hundred dollars is like come on you know that's funny that was funny Tina I like that one and then uh, oh it's just interesting to see what the news was um, as far as that goes um, uh, you know a hundred years ago you know it just makes us ours uh, uh, it it just seems. I don't know, overemphasis of the news. Um, I do have another article we're going to go over because this came up yesterday, and this is something I'm going to watch. This is a fellow New Yorker, as far as that goes. Uh, I think you all know who he is. And um, um, 
Billy Joe's 100th Madison Square Garden uh, resident show will be aired on CBS. This came out yesterday when I was watching the Super Bowl, and I'm interested because Billy Joel, I like him. This music, I don't think he's ever, did, has he ever done the Super Bowl? Just to let you know, Tony, uh, I the Super Bowl halftime with Usher, he was okay. He didn't knock my socks off, okay? Um, but it wasn't it wasn't bad, it, but it wasn't really, I don't know, for me, because maybe it's a genre of music and stuff like that. Billy Joe I love. I grew up with Billy Joe. Um, he's a New Yorker. Um, I don't know if he's ever done a Super Bowl and stuff like that. So um, I don't know. I like Billy Joe. Yeah, I don't, okay, Billy Joel, uh, the 100th show of Billy Joel's uh, record break in Madison Square Garden residency will air on CBS April 14th, so mark that on your calendar, April 14th, I'm going to put that down here, April 14th, April 14th, i got to put that on my calendar, Billy Joel, Billy Joel, I love his music, and uh, I've seen, I've seen some of his concerts, uh, seen some of his concerts on TV where he loves playing down in Madison Square Garden. The 100th Billy Joe Madison Square Garden, the greatest sh arena run of all time, will be filmed on March 28th um, at the famous uh, New York City venue. So, and uh, be re the residency will continue for four more shows, concluding in July with what uh, will be Billy Joe's 150 concert at Madison Square Garden. Every single one of these shows date back to his December 14th, 1978 debut. So he's been around. His music just lives. And it has been sold out, every one of them. Uh, Billy Joel uh, re re released his first uh, new song in nearly a decade, Turn the Lights Back On. He then performed the song live at uh, the conclusion of the Grammy. I didn't. I didn't watch the Grammy, so I, I'm gonna have to watch that. Let's find that on YouTube. Uh, the Piano Man, all-time classic, uh, as far as that. The Piano Man sung uh, singer recently told uh, that he uh, he had hoped Adele would sing the the new song, but was convinced by his co-writer Freddie Wexler to take the shot at it himself. Uh, I did perform it. I came back into the control room and listened back. Now, usually when I was recording, um, if I'd hear my recording back, I hated my voice. Isn't that the truth? Says the piano man. He hates his voice. Um, I, I listen to the replays of this broadcast. I don't like my voice. <laughs> I my voice sucks. <laughs> but but we all, we're all like that. So um, the first thought I would have oh my god Billy Joe singing it I didn't want to hear him and I listened back and I didn't hate it and that's maybe one of the first times that's ever happened uh, that's actually not bad I don't hate the the singer um, let's see Joe also has a solo soul and Cole uh, heading dates with uh, singer oh with Sting Rod Stewart and Stevie Nicks lined up for 2024 oh th those are some great singers right there in their own right so um, uh, so he, he's pumped out a lot of great music over the years as far as that goes and I, I love the guy they did say he's one of my favorite artists not the favorite my favorite uh, um, let's see Kansas and then Joe Bonamassa but Billy Joel ranks right up there. Billy Joel, he's a New Yorker. He's a great guy. Um, I like him as far as that goes. Let's see. What else do we have here? Do we have anything else? Uh, what, what do we got for time here? Oh, we got 10 minutes. We got time for one more. Let's see. What do we got here? Let's see. What do we got? You'd be shocked at what became legal the second you leave me. Oh, I don't want that one. Let's see. Awesome retro tech history surface on upstate. Oh, that might be interesting. Let's do this one. Let's do a little tech. We'll do this as our last. Um, I'm, I, I haven't read this one, so this is a, a new one right here. Let's go ahead and go with this one. Let's see if I find it here.
this one awesome retro tech history surface on upstate New York marketplace this is all from WNBF I watch it I have no association with WNBF they're a great uh, they have a great web page I listen to their radio station at afternoon radio it's a great station to listen to America looked very differently in 1982 you'd be hard-pressed to find someone who who had a computer in their house at that time much less the miniature supercomputers we're all carrying around in our pockets <laughs> Uh, but by the early 80s, our relationship with computers was changing thanks to the likes of two famous uh, individuals, Steve Waz and uh, or Steve Steve and Waz. Two famous Steve, Steve Waz and Steve Jobs, as far as that goes. There they are, right there, um, back in the day. We won't get into the company's history of Apple. Uh, you can uh, Google. You know, there's at your leisure there, but uh, suffice to say, the Apple II computer was one of the most successful products Apple ever produced, and that included more models offered like the iPhone. The Apple II was one of the first mass produced computers designed for ordinary people like you and me, uh, featuring a built in keyboard, color graphics, expansion slots, um, associated printers, disk drives, and the likes, inc an incredible 16 year running and six million units sold okay so there's uh, there's the Apple II right there uh, but despite that robust number not a lot of people held on to theirs think about it think about this when you get a new computer do you hold on to the old one maybe for a little while but uh, then when you get tired of the space it's taking up you fling it uh, to the electrical uh, recycle center. Uh, that's what makes this Facebook marketplace find so interesting, a complete working Apple II computer in fantastic condition. Um, it was purchased in 1982 for $2,500. Everything is working, uh, stored in original boxes since 1985. Computer it has a computer serial number, uh, has 80 column card, includes original manuals, Pristine condition, and how much do they want for this? Talk about a bona fide retro relic. It's located up. Uh, this person is located up in Saratoga Springs, and it was asking five hundred and twenty-five dollars. Well, I might, I might have flipped. The missus might not have liked it, but I probably would have bought it. Well, I have. I'm a Commodore sixty-four guy. I, that's what I, the computer I had. My first computer. While that may seem like a high price for obsolete technology, re technology retro tech, and specifically an Apple product, they're becoming more and more popular as collector's items. While I can't say 525 is a good price, I don't know if that I I, I would have paid that. That was a good price. And here here's the manuals, or there's the computer itself. There's a computer with its manuals and stuff. And there's, it's all in its original boxes. That's pretty interesting. So, so that, that's pretty interesting as far as, um, um, I'd pay 525 for that. Prestine, it works, it's in the original boxes. It's not, you know, it just, it's probably worth about a thousand bucks maybe in Prestine. What's that? Yeah, I'm getting there. Yeah, I, I got about um, another. Mrs. wants to get to get the cleaning started. I, I got to I get this going. Let's see, we got uh, about another five minutes, ten minutes. Okay. She's she's. Today's Monday. It's cleaning day for her, so I got to get out of her way and stuff like that. So it's just. Uh, but that that's that's interesting as far as uh, um, an Apple II. Uh, would you buy it for five hundred? You know, you got all the fixings right there. You saw the boxes and everything. I don't know. I think I would. If I had an extra 500. Which I will neither um, confirm or deny I have an extra $500. <laughs> okay. Um, 
let's see, we are getting at the end of the broadcast here. We're coming up on our two-hour mark and stuff like that. So uh, it's been a good broadcast. Start of the um, new week here, um, as far as that goes. Uh, uh, let's see, good deal, but who had? Yeah, who has the extra money exactly, Tina? But for nostalgic reasons, I you know I'm I'm. I've been watching a lot of Commodore 64 commercial or Commodore 64 um, YouTube's because I have I have up in the attic uh, a couple Commodore 64's. One of these days, when I, I I have a space where I can do this, I'm going to pull it out and I'll I'll do a show and tell type thing as far as that goes. And um, uh, but if I pull it out and bring it down here in the in the the studio here, the dining room. And I put it over there on the table. The, the, uh, just it'll piss the missus off. So I don't want to do that. It's just, she hits just. But it, it's the stuff that it's been sitting there. Now it, does the stuff still work? One of the keyboards doesn't. Another keyboard does. I think the for the most part the two just three just drives that I have for that they all work. But it's been sitting up in the attic. So it's in the original boxes though. I do have the original boxes, and I love the Commodore. The, but the Apple II was a little bit more advanced. And um, the Commodore, they, they sold quite a few units themselves, but the Apple II, I mean, they, they, that made computing for the average schmo a reality. Let's see, how are we doing on the, uh, okay, we got, we, we don't have an upcoming commercial, that's good. So we, I always like to look to see if we got a, com I don't like ending on a, com you know, I like to end about 10 minutes, five minutes before a commercial. So it's, uh, um, it, it just uh, it hampers the end of the broadcast and stuff like that. So uh, let's see. Let's go ahead and uh, stop sharing that. And um, I'm just about out of coffee anyway. But I got to get ready because we're going to uh, going out to lunch. We're going to go to BJ's uh, to get some things there. We when we were there the first time two weeks ago. We went through everything. We we're, we were, we were uh, overloaded going through this store because of the brand new store, getting used to it. Uh, T, it's very interesting. Have a great day. I'm going to, <laughs> we're going to okay, we're ended here. But we're going to start our day, and um, we're going to go back to BJ's to, to get a second look at the store because there was so much going on there when we went the first time. We got overloaded, and... Um, I think the second time will be well, it was enjoyable but I think this will be enjoyable because um, it's just a return trip to a store I think that we're going to like and stuff like that so we're going to go ahead and uh, thank you T for being here um, as far as that goes greatly appreciated and you too Tina thank you for being here as well and uh, we're going to go ahead and exit stage left and uh, get our day started I want to say thank you to uh uh, Tony D for being here. Thank you, my friend, my brother veteran, uh, good friend and fellow broadcaster. Thank you for being here. You have a great one, Tony. I'll be talking with you. And uh, thank you, Tina, our Jersey girl, for being here. Thank you very much. Uh, our return chatter, our return uh, good friend from the UK, T Gun. Thank you. Thank you for being here, T. And we had a visit from um, uh, producer Jace. Thank you, Jace. Check out producer Jace here on Twitter or on Twix or Twitch. Twix. I'm, I'm hungry for a Twix candy bar now. No, check him out here on Twitch. Producer Jace, and um, he streams uh, Saturdays and Sundays. And Monday is a day date day with his wife. Oh, I skipped that one. Okay. Have a good date day. I think that's what I'm having with the missus. A date day. Um, thank you, uh, uh, Aussie Joanna, coming in from. Uh, Queensland, Australia. Thank you for being here, my my friend, my good friend from Australia. We got a couple friends down there in Australia. Who else do we have? Well, thank you, the viewers that are watching this on uh, Twitch, as well as those that are watching on the replay on uh, Rumble and YouTube. Thank you very much. You can follow me over there at Fireman Rich at the following X slash Twitter, Truth Social, Blue Sky, which is free to get now. Uh, Instagram threads, those four at Fireman Rich, and on the public Facebook, it's the real Fireman Rich. But I'm primarily over on those on those platforms, so just check me out on what I'm doing. And I'm also here on Twitch at Fireman Rich. So you all have a great one wherever you may be on this big blue marble. Rich Roberts, wishing you all well. Have a great day. Live life. Have fun. Ciao for now. As always, peace.
Take care, folks. And thank you all in the chat. Thank you. Take care.